so we are learning about the let me recap so yesterday we discussed about the some different type of keywords so we gone through the all this type of keywords and we have discussed some of them in detail class enum what is enum and what is class and what is binary we have discussed and now we are discussing and also we are discussed about the access modifiers which are called uh, private default and uh, protected and public so we are discussing about these access modifiers so we all also seen some of the programs so how uh, where exactly we use private keyword and where exactly we will use uh, def so there is no keyword for default so we are not giving any keyword by default uh, it takes as a default specifier so so private specifier visible for within the class so it is uh, the variables or the methods which we declare private those are only accessible within the class So we have seen there are two methods. Not this one. So this is class A, this is class B. Absolutely, you will get errors. Because a dot object dot data is not visible because these are uh, these are in class A and these are so here we have two classes class A and class simple. So, if you are getting confused, I can write class B. So, here we have class A and class B. So, in class B, I am executing, I have written main method. So, their execution process starts. So, here I have created object for the A and I am accessing the uh, variables of the class A. So, the class A variable I have declared a private keyword so if any keywords which we um, any uh, variable or method we if we declared as a private keyword so those are only accessible within the class so outside of the class it won't accessible so here i am trying to access outside of the class so i got the compilation error that the file data uh, the data variable I am not able to access because it is not visible so it is not visible outside of the class if I removed private
Public static void में और Java X Java X application class must be extend application dot Here we have class A. What happens? No such field is there. Right, okay. So in those two. Okay. So we will have each one by one. Yeah. So if you get compilation errors only, we will learn the subject. Without getting errors, we can't learn subject. So here, uh, in within the class, we have int a and void. So by default, if I am not uh, writing any uh, keyword before variable, so it takes as a default space pair. So default specifier allows that within the class and the within the package it allows. So if we are having class A and class B. So we can use the class A variable in class B. So here we can see. Class A we have int A equal to 10. Uh, message so class b i have created the uh, object of the class a and i am asking asking the method message here so let's see
here you can see so default keyword so up to now we have learned about private so if we use private keyword if we declare as a private method if you are trying to access other class so it will give compilation error method message from the type a is not visible so if i remove private so if i am uh, accessing within the package so this is package pack this is also from package pack these are uh, available in same package so package is nothing but in java it package is a directory so here we can see there is same file name b.java b.java so packages are used to distinct the between the files so we can classify the file names so same class uh, we, we can avoid the conflicts this uh, if we have uh, named a same file name also it won't get conflict because we have distinguished with the package name so there are two types of packages like java also we have different type of packages lang vitil and so many packages io package so many packages we have inbuilt packages so here uh, private keyword uh, mainly private specifier is within the class and default default specifier means that you are not declaring any keyword before data type so no keyword is required for default so default specifier that is called default specifier so default specifiers are accessible within the package so outside the package if you want to, uh, if you want to access it won't allows it won't allow so only within the package we can able to access so private keyword we are not able to access default keyword we can able to access so protected so protected keyword means protected uh, next we are uh, yesterday up to uh, private and default we have seen now today class we are going to discuss about protected and public so public are visible or accessible within the class within the package and outside the package by subclass only so outside the package also we can use only the concept we can access through subclass concept so here how we can see this one so protected so here up to now we have discussed so this is default one so yeah this is we are not declaring any keyword means it is default one so if you declare as a protected if you are trying to access so we can able to access we can able to access So we, we are able to access. So protected keywords are within the packages also we can able to access and outside the packages also outside the packages also we can able to access through subclasses only directly we can't access through subclasses means I will explain. So here class C is there and I am trying to access object dot P. So have created object A. It will give we are not able to create the object A also because it is outside of the package. So type A is not visible. So if it is not visible, we need to say that outside the package. Yeah. 
they are not able to access. Then I will make this one as a public force. So we are getting error related to the message. So message from the type A is not visible. So because here we can able to see the my package dot C mail. So in this package we are not able to access this one. So which is there in outside of the package A. So if you want to access that one, we need to use subclass concept. So we need to extend A. This is we are going to learn in inheritance concept as a form like this. So what it says that so we know that extends is also a keyword. So this keyword what it says that whatever the methods and variables there in A class all are available in C plus. So after creating C object, defaultly these are accessible to the C class. So this is called the concept of uh, initials. So it overrides the methods in A into C. We are going to learn this thing. So now I am able to access because it is if I remove protected access. I got the message invisible. So if I added protected, So we are accessing. So I think uh, you understood the concept of private default and protected. So main thing is private is within the class only we are able to access. Protect uh, default is within the package. Within the package classes are able to access the variables. So default is within the uh, within the class, within the package, and outside of the package also, but through inheritance to subclass concept only so through sub subclasses are only able to access so this is about protected now public public means inside uh, within the class within the package outside of the package also we can able to access so there is no concept of uh, subclass so here we can directly create the object of a and we can able to access so here we need to say that it is public so now we are able to access so this is the main difference so public is we can directly able to access without the subclass concept also with the subclass concept also we can able to this is subclass concept. Here we need to create the subclass object. So we can able to. So the four ways it is possible. That's what written in here. So public keyword uh, using public we can able to access the uh, variable or method within the class, within the package, outside the package by subclass and also outside the package we can able to access directly so these are the four 
modifier we need because this based on this model we regularly are the uh, very uh, frequently are very compulsory we will use this axis modifiers in our every program so if you are writing any java program any if you are developing any application we will use So here public method, this is public method, this is public method, this is private methods, this is only accessible within this class, this is private, me private methods, these are private methods, this is public key, uh, public variable, public string, this is public string, so it can be accessible anywhere. Outside of the package, also it can be able to access. This is public method. So, like this, we will use the keywords. So, up to now, we have discussed about access modifiers. So, one more thing we need to discuss about static. So, here. As you know that uh, so static keyword in Java is it for mainly for uh, memory management purpose so because we have up to now we have discussed about private public uh, protected and there, there is a default keyword but without uh, defining any keyword it is a default now we are introducing another keyword is static so this static keyword, why we use static keyword before any uh, data type or method is to optimize the memory. So to memory management purpose we will use. So we can apply this static keyword uh, for variables, methods and blocks and nested classes also. So class within the class also you can use. So static uh, keyword can be can be used for variable method and block and nested class so So if you declare any variable as a static here, if you declare any variable as a static is called a static variable so this one area static variable so this static variable can use it to refer to the common property for all objects so so whatever objects we will create for class b so it is common for all so uh, here i think where we use so we need to create here so that we can
so we are accessing the static variable within the static methods only and uh, this is unique we are saying Here also we got the a value equal 10. So static variable can be. So here we have object. We have another object. This is object 1. Object. can say that this is object one so these are concept we have to know so it will take little bit times so this is 10 here also we have created object a so this is object 2. So how many objects we will create? The static variable should be same. Uh, here uh, we will see one example related static variable otherwise if you want only concept I can explain concept but we need practicals to understand the concept so hint we have rule number if any student student have rule number so where exactly we will use static we are going to learn so name student has name student college is nothing but abc college so in a particular college there are so many students but their college name is same so in those cases we will use uh, this is a static one it won't be uh, it will common to every students so in those cases we will declare that variable as a static because at the time of class loading only this static variable is uh, static variable calls so this static variable stores so this will be shared common to any variable all variables uh, the memory the class the static variables memory memory uh, gets memory only once in class area at the time of class loading so at the time of class loading only the static variable memory is allocated Whereas other variables at the time of object creation, the memory is uh, the memory is allocated. But whereas static variables, the memory of the static variable is allocated at the time of class loading only. That is the only main difference. So that's why we will say we will use static variable for memory management purpose. So if you are using static means at the loading of the class, loading of the class only, the memory of the static variable is allocated. So, whereas other variables by while creating objects. So, if you are creating object and we are assigning values to the uh, students. So, those will be uh, created. So, if you are creating uh, another class. 
so if just take another file class main method here I am creating object for student one so we have another concept called constructor so okay let me Data or roll number equal to ten as two data as data. method void So I'm calling Where is the run command? Package 
munsi. What happened? Why these are not coming? There's class files. Okay, let me do it like this. Just bear me two minutes because I want you to understand the logic. Should have constructor. Okay. Then also not come. So what I so here uh, I will because the trial constraint uh, I will explain today and tomorrow I will execute and tell you what exactly happens. Uh, so here what I am trying to tell is so here rule number is there name is there and college is there ABC. So here what I am trying to tell is I want to print the rule number name and college. Here I am not. Uh, here I am initializing the uh, student number. Each number, uh, each student name I am entering. Each student role number I am entering. But I am not assigning student college name. But I can able to display those class uh, student college name while calling the display method. So why? Because is it is loaded at the time of class loading only. So it is common to all. That's why I no need to initialize this class name. So at the time of, at the time of class loading only it is initialized. So so for this purpose only we will mainly use the static uh, variable. So because it is giving some errors, I will rectify it tomorrow and I will execute tomorrow in class. I will explain it because almost it is 10 18 in my current time. So it has some errors so i will rectify it tomorrow and i will explain it so the main concept is this one so we need to understand that part where we exactly use the static keyboard so that is for common to all so instead of creating each object instead of creating for each of assigning to for every student we can only create uh, we can only assign once and we have to reuse that one in that scenario we will use static keyword and static keyword is uh, loads at the time of class loading only it loads so that's why static uh, variables are called class variables so and uh, today i think I, we need to start actually uh, flow control statements so after explaining static i want to start control statement tomorrow uh, what i say is uh, coming to the class uh, where it is not there also deleted that one okay uh, so now going to the uh, directly going to the next uh, this class controllers
control statements so because 10 15 minutes i will just briefly explain uh, what is control statements in this class and tomorrow class i will explain each and every one so first i will do uh, uh, static program execution and also where we exactly use for methods and where we exactly use for uh, variable exactly method and block then we will go to the control statements so control statements are nothing but the we know that compiler uh, execute the code one by one from top to bottom so compiler execute one by one statement so the statements are executed order they appear so whatever order it is appearing based on the order the compiler mainly executes so the the uh, java provides statements that can be used to control the flow of the java code so so what i am saying is from front uh, from top to bottom the statements are executing but uh, java provides some statements so using those statements i can i can control the flow instead of executing these two lines i can skip these two lines and uh, i can execute from this line onwards so based on those things so uh, java provides some control statements so uh, that can be used to control the flow of the java code so that statements are called control statements control flow statements so this is also a, one of the fundamental feature of java which provides the smooth flow of a program java provides three types of uh, control statements so on only eight minutes i will because so many are dropping i think already started dropping so we have uh, three types of control statements one is decision making statements and the second one is loop statements third one is jump statements so we learned that a statement is nothing but the flow so each one which ends with the semicolon that is called a statement so we have uh, three types of statements which can uh, control the flow so flow means uh, executing from top to bottom so there are three types of statements which uh, which controls the flow so those are called control statements in java we have three types of control statements decision making statements looping statements and jumping statements so in looping statements we have uh, if statements so in if also we have if and if else if else ladder so n means if else if else like this it is goes on and nested if else so these are uh, decision making statements and also we have a uh, switch statement so in java we have our uh, decision making statements are if statements and switch statement so for loop statements uh, we in java we have do while loop and while loop next one is for loop and java from java it onwards we have for each loop and lambda expression so there are so many are there so as of now you need to know that there are a loop statements do while while for loop for each loop and for jump statements we have break and we have continue so these are the break statements so these are the two keywords we have yesterday we have discussed about break and continue so these are also uh, controls the flow 
so how this flow is controlling and everything we are going to see in next class as of now what we are discussing is decision making statements so decision making statements are two types if statements and switch statements so if statements is nothing but uh, decision making statements what we call mainly uh, we know that uh, in our daily lives also in real time also uh, we are taking some decisions so like that uh, java poking also if you want to take any decision based on the any condition so we use if and else conditions so we want to certain block of code to be executed when some condition is fulfilled so we want to skip the some block of code uh, when some condition is uh, not satisfied so those type of decisions we can take in java programming using this decision making statements so these are very very important in daily every um, programming we will use so whatever we are learning our words those are very useful in programming language so if statement is the most simple decision making statement is used to decide whether a certain statement are block so the first one is if statement so if statement is used to uh, evaluate a condition mainly uh, if we can say that here only so if you say that here int a equal to 10 int b equal to 20 so i want to check that uh, if which one is bigger one so how can i check and if we, a if i want to print the bigger value so how can i check that if condition I can check if uh, b greater than a so then i will print the b value b value so i want to print the big value so here uh, a a is uh, so b is greater than to a value so this condition is satisfies so i am printing b value so here i have take a decision so to take a decision i need some conditions so that condition we will use uh, in that condition we will write in if block so this is called block so we know that uh, whichever uh, uh, enclosed with curly braces that is called block so if this is called a block so we need to write these two uh, brackets so in these brackets we need to write the condition so this is the syntax if any statement or any condition if condition and block and in this one you can write the business logic so this is if so and also we have if else so where here is that only if a greater than b only we are printing otherwise if a less than we can write like this also only we have two possible ways uh, b greater than a and if you want to print b uh, a value B less than a then we need to print that b is uh, here we say that b is bigger greater here we say that a is less than less than So here we wrote two conditions, two if conditions to print that value. But using only one if else condition, we can print like this value. Instead of writing this value, 
we can simply write else condition so if it, this condition satisfied we will print b value if it is not satisfies we will print a value so in that in such cases we will use else condition so if uh, and else so this is second statement so one is if statement we only we can write if statement otherwise we sh we should have to write if else both only else statement is not there so only else we can't write only else statement we can we have to write if and else like this if and else so instead of writing two conditions like this so we can only write else so that it goes to uh, when this condition is not satisfied it goes to this block and it prints so here that's way so here it has to come as per our no each uh, top to bottom it has to execute but i am here controlling my flow so based on the my flow i am skipping this line and executing this line uh, and also if otherwise i am executing this line and skipping these lines so like this i am uh, controlling the my flow this is called uh, control control statements that's why these are called control statements here it is taking a decision that's based on the some condition that's why if else conditions if condition or if else conditions are called uh, statements are called decision making statements so here uh, we have if statements if else if else if else like this if else statements and if nested statements so tomorrow uh, we will learn these two and switch statement so and also we will see what are loop statements if possible we also see jump statements also yeah thank you all any doubts uh, please uh, one more thing uh, please share your mail IDs so that uh, I can send the uh, documentations, so the notes, Java notes, whichever I have uh, in class wise. So please share your mail IDs. So if you miss also, I can share. Thank you. If you need doubts, you can ask. Otherwise, Okay, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.